ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good evening, my fellow Americans. We now stand ten years past the midpoint of a century that has witnessed four major wars among great nations. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic process. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. The purpose is what the Roman Catholic system has all the time as, a, as her own purpose, is to infiltrate, to penetrate all the areas of life where the Roman Catholic can have control and access for the coming world government. I believe we, and particularly you, your class, has an incredible window of opportunity to lead in shaping a new world order for the 21st century. For the international order that we have worked for generations to build, ordinary men and women are too small-minded to govern their own affairs. That order and progress can only come when individuals surrender their rights to an all-powerful sovereign. When our founders declared a new order of the ages, they were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Of these militants organizations, uh, I train and prepare how they can become Baptists, how they can become Adventists, how they can become uh, 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 Methodists, how they can become Presbyterian, how they can become Pentecostal, and all these areas where they must infiltrate any area. Opus Dei is another arm of the Jesuits. What that means, you have Masons, uh, you have uh, Illuminatis, okay. you have uh, uh, the uh, you have the New Age movement, uh, uh, you have um, uh, the Trilateral Commission, you have the Club of Rome, uh, uh, you have uh, so many others. There are in different areas working uh, 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 through certain programs what they need in that particular area of where these organizations move, these, uh, where there are secret or public organizations. They need to control certain area of certain uh, people, and, and this is where and how they'll be ready to have them under control. This is Vatican Radio. The Catholic Church marks the World Day of Peace each January 1st, 
In his 2013 message for the day, entitled, Blessed are the Peacemakers, Pope Benedict XVI says peace is possible in today's world, but everyone must work together to achieve it. From defense of human life to food insecurity, from religious freedom to economic development, this message for World Peace Day on January 1st, 2013 is a far-reaching reflection on the need to establish right relationships between people and recognize that in God, God, we are one human family. Peace, Pope Benedict insists, is not a naive utopian dream, but rather it reflects the deepest longing of the human heart. While we must work to build a world order based on truth, freedom, love and justice, as Pope John XXIII wrote in Pacem in Terrace half a century ago, we must also recognize that true peace is also a gift from God. Surely we've reached paradise now. <clears throat> Christ is here in his resurrected glorified body the saints of all ages are there in resurrected glorified bodies i mean you got all the proof the evidence you can have wow so as dave said uh even after even after the even after the first battle of armageddon battle of armageddon happens the second coming of christ occurs uh god then uh, turns the world into a paradise during the millennial reign of Christ on the earth, the thousand-year reign. There's absolutely going to be a millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ on this planet, a literal physical kingdom where he will rule from his throne in Jerusalem over the entire planet for a thousand years. It'll be a, a reign of peace, justice, and righteousness such as the world has never seen before. And we and our glorified bodies are going to be scattered out all over this earth for the yeah. purpose of reigning over those who are in natural bodies, those those believers at the end of the tribulation who are brought into the millennium in the flesh will be reigning over them. And everybody on this planet who's in a position of authority, kings, presidents, prime ministers, mayors, school boards, uh, city councils, all of them will be made up of people in glorified bodies. Now, it's, Dave, are you saying there will be no separation of church and state here? I'm <laughs> saying there will be no separation of all church and state. Same. This is going to be a theocracy, and the result is the earth is going to be flooded with peace, righteousness, and justice as the waters cover the sea. And for Amen. that reason, I get up every morning and shout, Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha. come the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 According to British author Benjamin Krem, Maitreya, a teacher of extraordinary stature is here in the world to inspire us to make the fundamental changes that will usher in an unprecedented golden age of brotherhood and justice. What will Maitreya talk about on television and radio? Well, obviously he will talk about the need for peace, the need for justice in the world. But how do we get justice? Maitreya says there is only one way to achieve justice in the world. To see the world as one. Brothers and sisters, one humanity. And to share the resources of the world. Sharing is the key. Only sharing will produce the trust needed to end war forever. The New Age movement can be traced right back to the 19th century through Theosophy. Theosophy is the group that popularized the belief that we are moving out of the age of Pisces into the astrological age of Aquarius, which to them is an age of the unity of humanity, an age of enlightenment, an age of heightened spiritual consciousness. The concept of the New Age of Aquarius is based on astrology, an occult practice forbidden in the Bible. It is claimed that as certain planets come into alignment, the Earth will undergo a mystical transformation from its present state of turmoil into a blissful utopian state, literally heaven on Earth. Never before has there been such a new golden era. It's a battle warming each and every heart and soul and mind, and none of us are perfect. What matters is you got to care about the little guy. You got to care about justice. You got to care about wanting to build others up and wanting to have a better world. Don't be a hater. I couldn't help at one point in my discussions with privately with General Secretary Gorbachev. When you stop to think that we're all God's children, wherever we may live in the world, I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world. With the end of the Cold War, 
Henry Kissinger pointed out in his superb book on diplomacy. He said, none of the most important countries which must build a new world order have had any experience with the multi-state system that is emerging. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. That was written in 1994, and it may be even more relevant today. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries, and we would find out once and for all that we really are all human beings here on this earth together. This encyclical comes at a critical moment in human history. The ecological crisis is essentially a spiritual problem. The sin against the environment, the ecological sin. This is big for the Pope. Consume less and, and buy less. We have to really rethink our lifestyles. He blames a lot of it on society's throwaway culture. He tweeted out that the earth, our home, is beginning to look more and more like an immense pile of filth. Immense pile of filth. Pile of filth. The encyclical Praise Be is the most important papal document ever on the environment, backing the science on climate change. The Pope emphasized that despite society's obsession with economic profit, celebration and prayer are needed to reflect on one's life and to reflect on God. El hombre como imagen de Dios es señor y no esclavo del trabajo. Nos pide liberarnos de la obsesión por el beneficio económico que ataca los ritmos humanos de la vida y niega al hombre el tiempo para lo realmente importante. The Pope then added that even God took a day to rest. As such, families should follow this example by enjoying quality time together as a unit, and that includes making time for Sunday Mass. In a work, work, work world. 
What difference will one day make? The Earth won't alter its course. Cats and dogs will be cats and dogs. Rain will still fall from the sky. So take time for Sunday. Just know that your truck has a little thing for Monday. It's the soul that is corrupt and how we get back to a moral rebirth in this country, I don't know, since we are slowly eroding religion at every opportunity that we have. Uh, probably we should be debating a bill requiring every American to attend a church of their choice on Sunday.